Today I have something cool to show you guys. New Volvo came in about a week ago, but this one is a little bit special. This might give you a little hint. We're walking up to the parking now and there you can see him. This is one of the two Volvos that competed in the Paris Dakar Rally in 83. I think the other one won that year and this one broke its rear axle at about 4000 kilometers, so they were eliminated. I bought this Volvo together with somebody else and we're gonna restore it to its original Dakar spec. We found it on Blockit, a Swedish site, and then confirmed with Klaas from Tatanka that it is actually that Volvo, so that's really cool. Also got a ton of documentation with it, I'll show you guys that in a minute. For now I'll move it into my field so we can have a better tour of the Volvo. You can see some of the documentation that came with, it's pretty cool. To look through all this also oh i just saw it here the roy dutch uh, driver with his duff legendary this is the volvo that won the rally and this is the other one that broke the rear axle that's this one um so that's uh, pretty cool what it used to look like the other c303 that rallied is in the volvo museum somewhere where i'll be bringing a visit to see how that one looks as we want to restore this to its original glory. In between, someone decided to give it like this camo paint. It's not my favorite color, but that's what they preferred. The roll cage, the lights, the horn, the color, everything will be added back and uh, then hopefully compete with it in the Dakar Classic. It's a little bit crowded here, so let's drive it up into the field. You can also immediately have a look inside the cabin. I'll zoom out a bit. It's actually in a very nice shape, this Volvo. Always very well looked after. So here you can see all the gauges, voltmeter. Like for instance, my military Volvo doesn't have this. This is a civilian one. So it has some extra options. Uh, diff logs, four wheel drive, low range, high range. It has a B30 engine, uh, four gears. Here you can see the back. It's actually in really nice condition, this one. Uh, nice leather seats, my gimbal in the back. So yeah, let's, let's put it into the field. Let's turn it on. Choke is on, yes. It also it runs very nicely, starts very nicely. Let's see if I can drive with one hand. Yes, there we go. Opa. <laughs> uh, into the field, yeah, I will scrape on the branches a little bit, but that's okay um, as the paint is gonna go anyways and I mean it's an off-roader after all I need some battle scars You can see that the, the light for my brakes is on the brakes work very well I think I have uneven pressure somewhere in the circuit and that's why it's on so I'll have a look at that I can do a more proper walkthrough just positioning it but you can hear when it's idling it's actually pretty quiet for such an old car I'll go a bit closer to the engine which is here um, so you can hear and this is with the choke on actually I'll all turn the choke off Let's see if it's hot enough actually yeah, I think it's okay so now the choke is off and you can hear how quiet it is now when it's idling try to get a bit closer pretty close to the engine right now so I know a lot of people kind of diesel swap these for OM606 I think is quite common but I'm not gonna do that with any of them um, this engine is ridiculously reliable it is thirsty but I don't really care too much about that this one I want to keep as original uh, as original as possible because we want to bring it back to that Dakar state it was in, so definitely not swapping the engine or anything like that. With my, you know, I have I have that gray one that I crashed, but it's, it's still running, that I drive a lot. Also there, I'm not swapping the engine. I'm actually building injection on it to give it a bit more horsepower. Again, I don't really care that much about fuel economy. There's just no way you can be unhappy sitting in a car like this. Like, it's great. <laughs> I'll now put it into position and then give like a, a full tour of it. Let's turn it off and do a tour. I'll first do a full walk around of the car. 
Um, you can see it has camo painting. Someone in between changed this because they like to look better. I don't really understand why because in the decor spec it looked pretty cool. But this will all be removed, it will all be restored to its original decor spec. As you can see the car is actually in really nice condition, it's always very well taken care of. Before it came here the tank also did some work on it, it's the water pump, so definitely very happy with this. Here on the roof you can actually see still some of the original color, so most of the car will be this color in the end with some white and some stickers and stuff. But yeah, this is kind of the color it's going to be. You can kind of see what the color used to be. Quite interesting how it then kind of came into my possession. Volvo, after it competed in the Dakar, they started using it as a test car for Alusink. So the, the cockpit they, they painted with this special Alusink paint. Um, and the back part they kept original so that they could see how it would perform. Obviously then after some time the, the last part started rusting so then they replaced this with an Alusink part. Volvo basically had military or civilian vehicles. The civilian one, there are a few things you can recognize this. For instance, this window on military ones, the front window opens on civilian ones, it doesn't. It does have Alusink, which is normally what military vehicles have. The reason this one has Alusink is because after the Dakar rally, Volvo started using this as a test car for Alusink. So this part up until here, they uh, treated with alu zinc and this they kept original then after a while they saw that this didn't rust and this started rusting so then at some point they also replaced this for alu zinc it's quite funny how the car came into my possession initially because the other volvo dakar is in the volvo museum so you're probably wondering how did this car come here one of the engineers at volvo kind of got this volvo as a retirement gift when he left the company. He kind of put it away and never got around to it. At least that's what was told to me. Never got around to it. And then at some point it was sold to the person I now bought it from. Um, he really liked the, the military look and this kind of stuff. So the roll cage was taken off, the extra lights was taken off. It was obviously like painted in a different color and that's how it came to look like this. First, when we saw the add-on line, I'm doing this project with somebody else. When we saw the add-on line, we were a bit like, you know, is this a scam? Is it legit? At that point, I was in Sweden doing some kind of like uh, expedition to the North Cup. So we dropped by at Klaas and Sofia from Tatanka and also because Klaas was a mechanic in period at the Dakar we asked him like, oh do you know about this Volvo that is for sale? Is it really like a Dakar one? And Klaas was like, yeah actually I know the guy that owns it now that has it for sale really well and it is the ex-Dakar one. Klaas also did a lot of work on it, he even had this in his possession for a while. So that also gave then me and the other person the confidence to go like check it out. And then we also got all the documentation with it. We have like free maps with documentation. So that kind of like yeah, that proved that this was in fact that car. And we didn't really have to think about it a lot anymore before we pulled the trigger. And we're like, yes, we're gonna restore this to its former glory and then take it to the Dakar Classic. Hopefully next year or the year after that. Depends how long the restoration will take. Paint has to be redone. The roll cage has to be added on. We're now trying to track the original roll cage down. So hopefully we can find that. And then various lights and horns need to be put back into position. A minor changes on the inside. And then it should be be mostly ready. See, <laughs> the portals and everything, it just has crazy ground clearance, which is really nice when off-roading. What's also cool on this one is that it has a PTO winch that will definitely come in handy. There, you can see the red block engine. <laughs> then I'll show, give a nice side shot to you guys here. It's full camo glory. So let's go into the back. This is the bench. Here are the, the two jump seats. But yeah, as you can see also in here, it's just in such nice shape. Like it's probably the nicest one I've seen so far. And then back here you had like storage. Uh, the original shovel is still in there. So it's cool to have. Underneath here we have the engine. So let's open this up. We have these like latches here. It's one that's open and then should be able to peel this back 
And here we have its B30 engine, also known as an inline six. Yeah, it's it's pretty simple. I'm not gonna be doing too much explaining about this. So here we have the engine. As you can see, it looks pretty nice, pretty clean. I don't think I'll have too much work with this beauty. The engine looks pretty good. I also don't have to do anything because uh, during the Dakar, they just drove it like this, how it originally is. They didn't do any tunes or any extra things to it. They just drove it as it is. So that's how I'll keep it. So the inside here will be changed back to how it originally was. I think they had like a third Rocaro seat somewhere here where the mechanic was sitting. So this is all going to go out and it will be restored to its original spec. I do like this though. I don't know. It's a good thing to have the dog in and then the dog can stick its head through here or something like that. It does look, it does look really cool. I've closed up the engine now. But honestly, you could turn this into a pretty comfortable... Um, overlander i think it just has enough space if you're with like two people can make like a pop top or put a habitat on the back and then you'll have a pretty cool adventure rig let's check out the front a bit better so jump out close the door boom and check out the front oh, check out the cockpit oh. close the door so here we're in the cockpit. Here you kind of have a good overview of everything. Fire extinguisher, bleh, fire extinguisher, first aid kit. And then you can see like this and the ceiling. It's all kind of made of this wood material that I guess insulates a bit from the noise. Here we have the steering wheel, pretty big, pretty heavy, no power steering. Here you have all the switches, wiper fluid, wipers. It has the wipers. Wait, I can show you. This is like a funky feature of the car. It has like independent wipers. So each wiper has its own switch and I'll show you. So this is one, but then you can see the other one stays like that. And now I turn on the other one and it has two settings. This is the fast setting. That's the slow setting. Now it's slow, but yeah, it's quite a, quite a funky feature. I think let's turn that off. Here, obviously, fuel gauge, voltmeters, pedometer, uh, temperature gauge. And this is for, you know, for your fans, front and back. That the temperature. What is this? Oh, this is um, how much heat you want coming from, like, down there or not. This is the defroster. So if you turn this one up all the way like this and this one all the way down, all the hot air will come through these things. This proved very useful when we are in Scandinavia. Uh, throttle. And here you have the choke. So it has these cool sliding windows. Um, kind of open it like this. And this one you lift up. It's in a way pretty similar to my Land Rover. This is the one I'm currently sitting in. This one had a bit more white. That's how I can recognize it. And this one was mainly blue with some white on the side. For now, enough talking about the car. Let's do some off-roading. Now let's take it off-road a little bit to see what this thing is really capable of. See that first. <laughs> yeah, it's on. Let's go. This is filming myself and driving. It's uh, it's difficult. So now driving to the spot where I'm going to take the car off-road. You can definitely hear it's a lot more noisy right now. Just turned off the tarmac, so we'll turn on the four-wheel drive. As you can see, we're now heading deeper into the forest. Let's go. Here you can see we're definitely having a bit more, a bit more snow. Well, I think I found a pretty nice trail there. It's going up into the forest, as you can see behind me i'm going to walk it a little bit just to make sure i don't end up in something super sketch see it's snowing quite a bit up here we're pretty high we're i think like 1500 meters above sea now I'm going to walk the trail a bit just to see if it's nothing too uh, crazy <laughs> so this is kind of where the trail leads it's a bit muddy 
it's like some water down there and then there's some trails leading up into the forest but could eventually turn there as well so looks pretty promising it doesn't look too bad so let's give it a shot so i've put the camera into position and i'll go back into the car and drive up there I just did a small part off-road and the car is so ridiculously capable just doesn't struggle at all <laughs> just drove through this and now i'm going to drive the car back through here again it's gonna be fun okay now we get some like indoor shots from when I'll be off-roading. Let's go. We're gonna go through the mud. It definitely throws me around quite a bit, but we'll get there. I had quite a bit of fun driving some off-road here up in the mountains. As you can see, the car is pretty dirty right now. So what I'll do is I'll drive it down to the gas station to wash it. These cars still have brake shoes. So when you drive through the mud, all of the sand and shit kind of gets in there, starts scraping. So it's definitely important that after you take it off-road in these kind of conditions, you clean it well. As you can see, it's like super pretty up here. Definitely a nice little little adventure to test, them, test the car out. So now let's drive back down, clean the Volvo up and then we're done for today. We've arrived at the gas station now, now it's time to clean this filthy beast up. I'm just waiting to wash the car now, but I wanted to share this beautiful sunset with you guys over the mountains. Most important thing is just to clean here. Try to clean the, the drum brakes as much as you can and like underneath and in between everything here because we've been driving through the mud. Talking, let's clean it up. Here you can see how much stuff 
came off of it, but it seems to be mostly mud free now. Oh, the car's clean. Now it's time to go home and have a shower myself. Thanks for watching, guys.